When the Hummer EV Supertruck and its SUV variant hit dealer show floors between this fall and 2023, they'll be among the first models in GM's emerging electrified vehicle lineup built atop the company's revolutionary new Ultium battery system. General Motors is no stranger to the electric vehicle market. Its electrified ventures began in 1996 with the EV1, one of the very first viable battery-powered sedans produced by a major automaker. It was superseded by the BEV2, that's Battery Electric Vehicle 2 platform, of which the 2016 Chevy Bolt was the first model. GM is currently on to BEV3, powered by the Ultium battery system, which will serve as the platform for the 30 plus models it plans to release in coming years. During a press event last May, GM CEO Mary Barra assured reporters that the company plans to turn a profit on every Ultium EV it sells and is aiming to sell 1 million EVs annually by 2025. Unlike Tesla's cylindrical battery technology, GM instead opted to use pouch and prismatic style cells. This enables its engineers to bundle between 6 and 24 cells into each larger module unit. Then you've got between 16 and 20 modules making up a Hummer EV's overall battery pack. These cells can be stacked either horizontally or vertically within the frame of the vehicle, while cylindricals on the other hand are only ever oriented vertically. With this added flexibility, GM can pack anywhere from 50 to 200 kilowatt hours of energy capacity into its vehicles, double what the current largest Tesla battery, which powers the P100D, can provide. That translates into 350 to 400 miles of estimated range and a 0 to 60 in as little as 3 seconds. GM developed Ultium's wireless battery management system in conjunction with analog devices. The system reportedly requires 90% less wiring and reduces the battery pack's volume by 15% while improving design flexibility and without compromising range or battery longevity. What's more, as Doug Parks, GM's Executive VP for Global Product Development explained last May, cell costs currently represent 80-95% to of the battery's total price, a percentage which has risen in recent years from around 60-65% to of the total cost, with casing, wiring, and other components representing the remaining production expenditure. This management system isn't just sleeker than its competition, it's smarter too. When the Ultium modules are assembled, specific details about each cell's particular chemistry are programmed into the BMS. Not only does this enable the battery management system to better balance out load between the individual cells as a module ages, it will enable technicians to swap out full modules whenever a more effective chemistry comes to market without having to replace the entire overall battery pack. You basically be able to mix and match your cell chemistries depending on what's best available at that time. What's more, once one of these batteries reaches the end of its automotive service life, it can be easily repurposed to other applications such as home energy storage. The Ultium cell's chemistry is also unique to the industry. The Chevy Bolt, for example, used a nickel-cobalt-magnesium battery. Now, cobalt has proven to be very effective at stabilizing a cell's chemistry, greatly extending the battery's overall durability. However, cobalt is produced almost exclusively in three countries, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Russia, and Australia, with the Central African country mining more annually than the other two nations combined. The DRC is also a politically volatile nation, and whenever trouble starts popping off there, the entire world can fuel the subsequent supply pinch, while cobalt exports are temporarily interrupted. And unlike coup positive Tesla, GM and its partner, LG Chem, has taken a more calculated approach to avoiding interruptions to its EV supply chain. Ultium's nickel, cobalt, magnesium, aluminum batteries contain 70% less cobalt than a similar NCM-based cell, while retaining the same power characteristics. GM and LG Chem are currently working to further develop the technology in hopes of eventually eliminating cobalt and nickel from their battery chemistry altogether. The Ultium system is capable of handling an 800 volt electrical architecture. That is, most mainstream EVs on the road today, excluding the likes of the Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron GT, and Polestar 2, as well as the majority of the DC fast charging stations available, they all use a 400 volt standard, which limits the amount of energy a station can dump into your car's depleted power cells to around 200 kilowatts. With an 800 volt architecture, a DC station can pump as much as 350 kilowatts across its line, more than double that of Tesla's 150 kilowatt limit. This should enable Ultium vehicles to charge faster and also output some of that power to other devices, even other EVs, using an integrated charging control unit. 
There is no word yet from GM as to when, or even whether Ultium powered vehicles will be V2L capable, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, or have bi-directional charging capabilities. GM also claims that by eliminating cobalt in favor of more affordable aluminum, the company may also be able to get its battery price down to $100 per module before 2024. $100 per module is widely considered to be the holy grail of EV battery technology, as it's that rate when EVs achieve price parity with fossil fuel powered vehicles. GM has pledged more than $2.2 billion to overhaul and retool the Lordstown, Ohio assembly plant as an Ultium battery facility the single largest investment in a plant in GM's history. Once the Lordstown plant begins operations, it's expected to employ more than 2,200 workers and will be powered exclusively by renewable energy by 2023. GM has also announced plans to produce some 250 million Ultium cells a year by 2025. And once fully online, the Lordstown facility should produce at least 30 gigawatt hours of batteries annually. 50% more than Tesla's Nevada-based Gigafactory is capable of producing.